Good morning. This is No Pain, No Game Financial Radio. I'm your host, Ryan Payne, president of Payne Capital Management. That's P A Y N E for the record, with our chief investment officer, the man with the plan, and yes, is my father as well. Big Bob Payne, good morning, Dad. What's shaking on this glorious February weekend? What's happening? Well, Rod, the Super Bowl's over. Uh, my former coach got his ring, which was uh, nice to see. I wish he'd have gotten it when he was the coach of the Eagles. But, you know, now it's uh, wide open for next year. Maybe your team or my team will be in next year. <laughs> I mean, I have to say it was great to see Reed win one. I mean, he's been around for a very long time, and clearly – we ran him out on a rail in Philadelphia eventually, <laughs> <laughs> but that was pretty cool to see. It was a very exciting Super Bowl. And Bob, I just hope you weren't one of the people this last week when they were Googling the new coronavirus, you weren't actually Googling beer virus. I hope you weren't that guy. Well, I stopped drinking Corona just as a preventive measure. So, um, you know, just uh, taking, taking all precautions, son. Uh, but uh, you know what? It's been a great week for the market. So uh, let's have a great show. Sounds good. Well, we've got a great show for you this morning to help you on your path to financial freedom. We're going to discuss the top financial concerns in 2020. What are you and other Americans worried about most, financially speaking, this year? Bob and I are going to break it down for you. We're going to talk about emotions and decision-making. We're going to discuss why we are the worst enemy when it actually comes to our finances Along with this week's financial propaganda, we're going to talk about all the different things the media has been talking about this week, stuff you need to avoid at all costs to make sure your planning stays on track. And it's going to be an all-pain weekend. We have financial advisor, my brother, Bob's son, Chris Payne on the show today, financial advisor at Payne Capital Management. He's going to break someone's real retirement plan down for you. So we've got a lot to cover. Let's hop to it. Bob, you know, a recent poll of folks with more than $500,000 in investable assets broke down their top financial concerns for 2020. So I thought we could address those fears with our listeners this morning. And the number one is, and we hear this all the time, I'm concerned about being financially secure in retirement. You know, right, different people have different ways of putting it. Um, I remember a client of mine from back in the day, as you guys like to say, uh, where they looked at the review, they looked at the projections, it looks, looks good, Bob, but can you just guarantee me I won't be a bag lady? Yeah, it's that simple, right? I mean, it's like, you know, you're saving, 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 and you have lots of different accounts. We talked about this. You have your proverbial collection of investments in all different places, and you don't really know, you know, what's it actually going to look like when I have to draw from my portfolio, and what if I have medical costs down the line? What about inflation? So there's a lot of things to be concerned about. And a lot of things that can keep you up at night to make you feel like you're not secure in your finances. Well, that's why we have the financial media, right? Their whole job is to keep you up at night, to get you to worry, to think, oh, I'm not making enough or I'm going to run out of money. I mean, that's their sole job if you think about it. Yeah, it is. And the only way to really defend against that, it's very simple, is you want to run some financial projections. And if your financial advisor is not doing that for you now, that's a real problem because this is the time as you accumulate your assets that you need to get a game plan. You don't want to just have the proverbial collection of investments. You want to make sure all your investments are working towards making sure you're financially secure. Well, that's the most important step you can have is to have a financial projection to know what you're going to look like financially, not just today, but next year, the year after. What happens when the government takes their taxes? What happens when you have to take money out of your IRA? What about inflation, right? Why is it that everyone that comes in to see us doesn't have a financial projection from their financial advisor? Because most financial advisors are lazy, Bob. <laughs> That's the truth of it. <laughs> but I'll tell you, it's a long way to go to financial security if you know, number one, what income you're going to need if you're close to retirement or you're tired now. And number two, how are you going to fill in that income gap? And that's like, okay, I know what I'm getting in Social Security. If you're lucky, maybe you have a pension. But what kind of income can I generate from my portfolio? So I know every single year, every single month, I have this kind of money coming in. That takes you a long way to financial security, and there are numbers you can actually run or have run. Yeah, but Ryan, you're the dean of common sense. You come up with this stuff. It's so simple, right? Make sure you have the income to cover your expenses. You know, um, that's just common sense. But a lot of a lot of folks, a lot of you don't realize that you don't have investments that generate the type of return you need. It's not just about appreciation. And you know, the great thing when it comes to investing is you can actually take less risk 
and generate more income from your portfolio, make it more secure, um, and know with a lot of certainty every year exactly what you can expect from your portfolio. That's huge. And it's just taking certain tweaks, going from what we call the wealth accumulation portfolio to a wealth distribution portfolio when you start the living off the land, per se. And there's a lot of ways to do that to really put yourself in great shape, create that security. Right. I just heard everybody just have a big sigh of relief. And you told them that most of you are taking more risks than necessary. The one number one characteristic of every single person we meet with taking more risk than necessary. And you know what? That actually is number three on the list of what people are concerned about when it comes to their portfolio. Can it withstand a market downturn? And I'd say in most cases, probably not, because you're probably taking more risk than you even know you have in your portfolio. And unfortunately, Bob, the only way we know we're taking too much risk in our portfolio is when it's too late, when the market's already going down. Well, unless you meet with someone who does a projection and shows you that, you know, here's what your portfolio did in 2008 and 2009. I mean, it's almost weekly now we sit down with someone who has a portfolio that in today's environment, if it drops like it did in 2009, they're going to lose half, right? Not a little bit, half. What you really want to know is, right, what is my portfolio going to look like in a down market? And you can model those things out. Um, but that's how you can really get an idea of the risk that you're taking currently in your portfolio. And it's so important to know that because a big downturn in the market, by taking too much risk in your portfolio, that can derail all your retirement goals. And that's just like a bad place to be. And it doesn't have to be that way. And yeah, that's not the biggest problem, though, Rye. <laughs> what, what is the biggest problem? The biggest problem that I see right now is that the advisors out there have never been through a bear market in bonds. And even though you think you might have a safe portfolio because you're balanced in the portfolio of stocks and bonds, you have those dreaded, horrible, disgusting bond funds in your portfolio. Yeah. So we think about bonds, you think about safety in your portfolio, and it's a good point. A lot of these bond funds that you can own right now have a lot of what you call junk bonds within them. We talk about this a lot. There's a lot of risk if interest rates go up. So not that you don't want to own bonds in your portfolio, but it's critical how you own those bonds. Again, it comes down to really understanding that underlying risk in your portfolio. You have to run some kind of analysis to really understand what you own. And the fact of the matter is you can't do a wealth projection if you don't have bonds that have a fixed rate of return. So you actually need what we call fixed income in your portfolio, not bonds. Bond funds are not fixed income. They're investments that are open-ended, that have downside risk, and you can't even tell what you're going to get in yield or income over a 12-month period because it changes every day. Exactly. So moral of the story is find out the risk you have in your portfolio. Once you figure that out, the other big concern we have in 2020 is, am I spending too much? And you might be. <laughs> you, know, you don't want to outlive your money. We talk about that all the time. So what you have to figure out is like, what does your spending look like now? If you're getting close to retirement, you want to know what you're spending right now. And odds are you're probably going to need close to what you need now in retirement. I don't believe in that whole, you only need 80% when you're retired. That's just not true. That's one of the risks of having a big booming bull market is because your account keeps going up. You think, well, I'll just keep spending. Look, I'm not, I'm not, it's not dropping. It's still at that same level it was a year or two ago. But you really do need to know how much is going to come out of the portfolio because we're going to have an inevitable turn down. We're going to have a drop in the market. And suddenly, you're not going to have the income you need. Um, so, you know, spending is important. And I can tell all of you, when you get into retirement, you spend more. It's just the fact of the matter is you spend more. You spend on your grandkids. You spend on your vacations. You're having fun. We love it. Even if you think you're not, you should plan for it anyway, um, because again, you're going to need a lot more income than your parents did to get through retirement because you are living longer. There are health care costs. There is inflation, all those things. And then you know, once you've sorted that out, I would call this the one pro move we all worry about is I'm concerned that I have not properly tax optimized my portfolio. That's a hard yes. There's so many things you can do to make sure that your portfolio is more tax efficient than not, and you're not doing it. Nothing drives me crazy, Rye, when I sit down with someone and they say, well, so what if I paid extra money to the IRS? I made 20% last year in my international portfolio, 30% in my growth portfolio. You know, that's money that should be in your pocket compounding for your benefit, and you have to care. You know, those taxes eat away. You need to be tax efficient when it comes to your portfolio. Yeah, and that just needs to be planned for. And if you're thinking to yourself right now, that's what I need. I need a game plan that figures out exactly what I'm going to need to spend in retirement. How do I secure my retirement? How do I optimize it for taxes? 
Well, here's your shot to do it. We have 10 slots. If you give us a call or text right now, Bob and I will run for you our total financial master plan, and we're going to do that with no obligation or cost. It's a full holistic review where we look at everything. All you need to do is bring in those financial statements, put them in a paper bag, bring them in the office. We're going to take all that information and we're going to build you your own personalized financial portal so you can see your entire net worth at a bird's eye view and we can start looking at all those critical components. We're going to look at everything from income. Well, how are you going to replace that income when you're retired? What is your income gap now? We're going to show you how to optimize or increase the income on your portfolio to create an, a stream of income that you can't outlive. We're going to look at diversification. If the market goes down tomorrow, are you protected? We're going to show you exactly how to bulletproof, protect your portfolio for retirement so you're not going to be in a position where you have to go back to work. That's a bad thing. And we're going to look at taxes and fees. There's a lot of hidden costs in your investment portfolio and those mutual funds, those insurance products, annuities. We're going to show you all the hidden costs are in your portfolio, show you how to reduce it and optimize your portfolio for taxes so there's more money in your pocket. Then we're going to tie it all together into one total financial master plan utilizing strategies now our family has literally worked on for over 45 years to take your family from point A to point B with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success. And all you have to do is text or call 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. Or you can simply just call 844-PLAN-NYC. That's 844-PLAN-NYC. If you're one of our next 10 callers, You've saved over 500000 for retirement. Brian and I are going to create for you your own total financial masterpiece. There's no obligation. There's no cost. There's no strings attached. But guess what? There's no plan unless you call or text right now, 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. Or you can simply just call 844-PLAN-NYC, 844-PLAN-NYC. This is Bob Payne. And I'm hanging out with my son today, Rye Payne, because we're the pains of no pain, no gain, Financial Radio. Ryan Payne, Bob Payne, no pain, no gain financial radio, and that's P-A-Y-N-E for the record. And Bob and I want to make sure we're giving you the most common sense, practical advice for your planning and investing. That's why we put together our newest guide. We give you five ways to save on taxes in 2020, and we give you the rundown of the new SECURE Act. There's a lot of new tax benefits you want to be aware of. You can download it for free. Simply text the word bullish, that's bullish, B-U-L-L-I-S-H, the 555-888. That's the word bullish, the 555-888. We give you five ways to save on taxes this year, and we give you the highlights of the new SECURE Act. There's a lot of new ways to save on taxes. Money saved in taxes is just as green as any money can make invest it. Check it out. You can download it for free. Simply text the word bullish, the 555 888. That's the word bullish, the 555 888. So, Bob, we like to think that we always make decisions based on logic and facts, but the truth is our emotions play a huge role for us when we're in the decision making process, especially when it comes to making financial decisions, which can end up being really bad, actually. Actually, it can be bad, right? There's really, really a time where you make an emotional decision, a smart decision. It's like, um, it's like going shopping on Amazon after happy hour at your club. <laughs> yeah, that's 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 actually a great analogy. That's never a good idea. But here's a problem. You know, I think it. You know, we had a seminar not too long ago. We asked everyone in the audience, "How many of you people make rational decisions and everything that's important in your life?" And what did everybody say? Uh, hands down, everyone raised their hand. Of course, I make rational decisions. I always make good decisions when it comes to my life. I'm I'm as pragmatic as can be. The difficulty I have and you have is because we do this every day. We live it. We breathe it. We understand the financial markets. You know, someone calling us emotional to make an emotional decision is like living in a high rise, right, where the only way to get to your apartment is in an elevator. And you decide on the fourth floor, well, you know, I'd better get off and wait and see what happens. And then there's no staircase. The elevator never comes back down because, you know, the markets, financial markets, a well-planned account goes up forever. And you're sitting there on the fourth floor 
you know, this elevator is on the 2000th floor now since 2009. It's not coming back for you. I mean, that's how that's how crazy these decisions are when it comes to emotions, right, in my opinion. Yeah, and I think the perfect example of that, and it's going to happen again this year, is the election cycle, right? We've seen so many decisions made badly because we've let our emotions get the best of us. And it's bipartisan. I mean, when Obama got into office, we were in the financial crisis. A lot of us sold out of the market, never got back in. And even when the election happened in 2016, once Trump was elected, a lot of people that we know sold out of the market thinking, okay, it's not going to be good now. And of course, both parties were wrong. We've been in a 10-year bull market, so you got to be really careful not to make decisions based on your political beliefs, What's the you know whatever the news du jour is. It's a very dangerous way to make financial decisions, and it can affect you adversely in so many ways. You know, Ryan, you're, not, you're never often wrong, but I just want to correct you one thing. Right. We're not in a 10-year bull market. We've been in a bull market since 1776. You know, the market <laughs> always goes up over time. You know, the market's higher now today than in anybody's lifetime. I mean, it's it's high. It's been higher. It's never been lower than when the day you were born. And the market always goes up. So to make an emotional decision means that you're putting yourself. You must have a portfolio that's making you feel the risk. And that's the only thing you have to do is you have to avoid that. You know, those those things in your portfolio that make you want to take that kind of risky or make that risky decision. Yeah, and the way to take the the emotion out of your portfolio is because odds are you probably have a collection of investments. You have a 401k yep. here. You have a couple of brokerage accounts. You have lots of people, different people giving you advice is you don't have a game plan. And without a game plan, you are at the whim of your emotions. That's why you've got to reverse engineer. We talk about this all the time. But knowing where you're going has to do with having those goals and building your portfolio around that so that you can basically defend against your emotions. That's the key. Again, it's that simple, Rye. It's not a matter of, do I have a good or bad portfolio, right? That's how people look at their state. Did it go up or down? Oh, it went up, it must be good. Oh, it went right. down, it must be bad, right? It's about whether it's right or wrong. You know, you have to have the right portfolio for you. You're all unique individuals. You all have unique goals and dreams and values. You need an approach that fits you, not what they tell you on the media, not whether it's good or bad. It's about being right or wrong, and you need to have a portfolio that's right for you. And it's not that emotions are always bad, but when's a good time? When do emotions actually do come in play that can actually help your financial decisions? Well, you know, you don't want to get real sloppy and emotional over your children and end up leaving your entire estate to them and not enjoying your retirement. That's a bad time to be emotional, right? <laughs> well, we, one could argue it doesn't hurt to give your children more than, than not. Uh, another thing, though, is are things like your mortgage, right? Maybe you're deciding, do I pay my mortgage off? Even if you have a great interest rate, if emotionally you just don't like having debt, my advice is just pay it off. It probably doesn't make a big difference anyway. I think there are times, Bob, where you know if it's going to make you sleep better at night, you know, managing the risk and things like that can be important, and you, you should factor in your emotions. And that's such a great point, right? It's not all about your stock and bond portfolio. It's about your expenses. It's about your, you know, what liabilities you have. You know, you have to look at what's the rate of return that I'm earning on my portfolio. What's going to income I'm going to generate? Versus the cost, you know, of those liabilities, right? It, sometimes having a low interest rate and you can't sleep at night is not a good mix, right? So you got to reduce what you say, reduce the risk to the sleeping point. And if you're sleeping well, then you're probably in good shape and you won't make those emotional decisions. Yeah. And the problem is, and we talked about this in the first segment, is we only really get emotional when the market actually goes down. And to your point, Bob, we've been in a bull market now for a long time. This stretch has been about 11 years. We're in our 11th year anyway. Is you don't really remember how you react when the market goes down. And that's what's really important. What you want to know today, and we talked about this in the first segment, is if the market goes down by 50%, what is my portfolio going to do? And am I emotionally going to be able to handle that? Am I able to see my portfolio go down by a million dollars? Probably not. That means you probably have the wrong portfolio in place. You're absolutely right, Ryan. And I think the only way that you can discern that is to see it in writing, right? Is to see a projection of what happens. I mean, now if you see nothing but black on your statement, you're, you're in great shape. But if you see a sea of red, you know, and you can see how you react to that. You know, back um, back in the 90s, I remember sitting down with a client that, um, you know, had a lot of money in their portfolio and I showed them. I just crossed out the value of their portfolio and wrote down half. You know, here's what you would have in the next Simple. major decline if you continue to be this aggressive. And they said, well, we don't, we don't want to lose half. We want to double. And I said, well, if you want to try and double your money, you got to accept losing half. And I'll tell you what, that's an emotional response when you see what it looks like. 
And I can tell you, I mean, we see so many people every week. That's your biggest issue. You probably saved enough money. And we show this all the time. We can project out for you. You're set for life. And the one thing we have to show almost everyone walks in our office is the only thing that can derail your retirement is if we get a big market correction because you have way too much risk. And that is a huge deal. Don't you want to know that you have that part protected? Perfect place for the offer. You know what? If you're thinking to yourself right now, you know what? Ryan's right. I need to know. Am I taking way more risk in my portfolio than necessary? I know I'm financially healthy. I want to be sure that I stay healthy. Well, then, you know, you're, there's your opportunity. Give us a call. If you're one of our next few callers, you've saved at least 500000 for retirement. Ryan and I will create for you not only a financial plan, but a 360 financial portal. This is a financial GPS, just like the GPS that's in your car, your truck that you're driving right now, which will tell you where you are. More importantly, it'll map out where you're going and report daily on the progress of your journey to financial independence. It will define your financial timeline and the best, most efficient route to achieve your goals. It will put your financial life on autopilot and help you to avoid these financial potholes that Ryan and Bob talk about every week. Create for you your own customized financial plan, not some cookie cutter plan you found on the internet or some stockbroker pitched you a couple of years ago. It'll update your net worth daily in real time so you'll always know where you are, but more importantly, exactly where you're going. In addition, Ryan and I are gonna take all those statements. Matter of fact, Grab those statements right now, stick them in a folder, stick them in a shopping bag, make an appointment. We want to be certain that you have the three key elements of a successful strategy. Are you truly diversified? Are you diversified across asset classes as well as within asset classes? Are you being overcharged by your portfolio? You know, Rye tells us every week there's lots of hidden costs and fees. He's right. We're going to show you exactly where they are. They're in plain sight. You just don't know where to look. I don't know about you, but I don't like being overcharged by my own portfolio. We want to be certain that doesn't happen to you. Lastly, we're going to look for that income, that income that's so critical to maintain a retirement lifestyle that you're accustomed to. You know, if you're retired right now, your number one goal is to stay that way. And that requires dependable, repeatable income. And lastly, we're going to tie it all together into one total financial masterpiece where we'll answer that age old question. Are you going to outlive your money? Where's your money going to outlive you utilizing strategies that my family's been perfecting now for over four decades. That's right. For 45 years, we've been helping families just like you get from your point A to your point B, your goals, your dreams with your values, with the least amount of risk and only the certainty that a fiduciary like Payne Capital Management can provide. So don't waste time. Call or text at 844-752-752. 6692. That's 844 752 6692. If you're one of the next 10 callers, you have over $500,000 saved for retirement at 844 752 6692. That's call or text at 844 752 6692. Here's your shot to get that second opinion at 844 752 6692. Make sure you're on track for retirement at 844 plan. NYC. That's 844-PLAN-NYC. This is no pain, no gain. Financial Radio. <laughs> it's time for Financial Propaganda of the Week. This is where Bob and I scour the daily financial news and call it the biggest offenders of offering obscene and profane financial guidance to help you protect yourself from making any ill-advised financial decisions Bob, I know you and I, we just have the articles going back and forth every week. We try to read practically everything. But what stuff this week was just so egregious that you had to talk about on air? Why don't you give me the rundown, man? Well, what I don't want to talk about, Rye, are the egregious articles because the headlines have been dominated for the last year about recession, inverted yield curve, uh, flu pandemics. You know, it's, it's everything negative possible to make you want to sell your investments to you know, go out and build a shelter in your backyard and, and stick your head in the sand for a couple of months. But, you know, the fact of the matter is, as we came to the end of January last week, we're now in February, the global economy is doing really well, right? We're seeing, you know, really good numbers come out of Europe, out of China, out of Asia. Um, and, you know, the thing that people don't really look at, a lot of you don't look at, is something we call the PMI, right? The uh, Purchasers Managers Index. So actually what we're seeing from the numbers, you know, we see the, we, you know, you and I look at the economic numbers all the time is we're seeing expansion, not just in the U.S., but also around the globe. 
Yeah, and it's just a simple when manufacturing picks up simply, that means that economic activity is picking up. It's as simple as that. Uh, so you're right. You know, Despite all the news out there about how things have been slowing down globally, that's all we heard last year. Remember, this is why strategists always get it wrong. Um, surprisingly, the world's actually doing a lot better than everybody thinks. Well, you know, I was amused the other day. I was watching you on uh, one of the financial news channels, and you were telling the really audience about how the analysts typically get it wrong. The strategists, they were dead wrong last year. No one had a projection anywhere near as high as the market went. And then they pointed out to you on the panel that you were sitting next to two strategists. So um, <laughs> you, you <laughs> handled yourself pretty funny. well there, son. <laughs> I didn't find that very funny. So what else do you have for us, Bob, in the world of financial propaganda? The other thing that I see is they're always focused on manufacturing. But, you know, we're a service-based economy, and so is Europe. And Europe's the services PMI continues to expand, right? We're seeing good numbers come from there. And then just in our country this week, we had jobless claims come in, and we had unemployment numbers, payroll numbers come in that was twice the expected gains. So one thing that I just wanted to make sure that everybody thinks about is in a big, booming, secular bull market, the news is always on the upside, right? The surprises, the good is good news. It's always good news on the upside. You're right. So most of the prize has been good. Another thing is, which is crazy, is Americans are saving over 7% of their income. So, you know, you hear a lot about how people have credit card debt and Americans are infamous for not saving. Right now, Americans are saving more than they have in years. So not only are Americans spending money, but they're putting it away. So there's a lot of what we would call tailwinds to keep the economy strong and keep the news coming in more positively as we move along, which that's where the odds are right now. You know, Rye, I saw a number the other day that uh, as a country, right, as, uh, as Americans right now, when you factor in your portfolio values, your pension values, your real estate values, net of all liabilities, we're the wealthiest we've ever been in the history of the planet right now. So don't believe what they tell you. You know, things are better than expected. Um, you know, another thing, Bob, we've been hearing a lot about, which might make you more nervous, is this whole coronavirus. I wrote something this past week. I said the economy... And the coronavirus, not the beer, dude. <laughs> so remember, right? You know, it's a funny joke. But you know, I think the thing you have to remember is the, the U.S. is very insulated from the rest of the world. In fact, 85% of our economy is domestic. It's not international. We're not that reliant on the rest of the world, which makes the impact on our economy very, very small, again, despite what you've been hearing in the media. Well, you know, Ryan, do you know what the uh, coronavirus is really named after? No, actually, I don't. I'm assuming it's not the beer, Bob, but uh, I don't actually know why they call it the coronavirus. Can you enlighten me and our listeners? Well, as it turns out that the shape of the virus actually looks like a crown. And of course, crown is corona. And that's where the name comes from. And it's not the first virus. It's just an iteration of the coronavirus. There's been other coronaviruses before. Ah, interesting. So I didn't know that. So that's actually about the shape of the actual virus. Who would have known? Who would have known? I'm sure the marketing department of Corona right now, the beer company is probably cringing. Like, this has got to be the worst PR they've ever gotten. <laughs> so uh, I do feel bad about that. Uh, the other thing to think about, too, and this is kind of an interesting statistic, is like take Starbucks, for instance. You know, they basically have a lot of stores that have been closing. You've heard about this in the news. In China, you're thinking that's going to be so bad for our economy. Their stores would have to be closed for seven years straight just to move the U.S. economy by 0.1%. So the point is, it takes so much to move the needle with the U.S. economy because it's so freaking big. You know, right, it makes a lot of sense. I mean, I just had my landscaper the other day ask me, he said, Bob, why is the market down? I mean, why is a virus in China having such an impact on the global economy? I said, well, it really doesn't. It's just the fear of the unknown. It's, you know, logically, it sounds right, right? Oh, everybody gets this. They're all going to be sick. Nobody's going to buy coffee. Nobody's going to go to Starbucks. You know, nobody's going to buy cars. And you just think that that's the way it's going to be. But we don't realize is that one day it'll be gone and everybody will buy cars or will buy coffee. But, you know, not one company doesn't make a dent into the GDP of the global economy today. Yeah. So I think by the long story short is from every economic measurement, the world is doing pretty good. And if you're thinking to yourself, I need a strategy that's not based on all the bad news out there, but it's based on my goals, where I'm trying to go. Well, you have over $500,000, and you're one of the next seven callers. We have seven slots left. Myself and Bob will run for you our total financial master plan. 
I'm going to do that with no obligation or cost. It's a full holistic review where we look at your entire financial health. All you need to do is bring your statements in. I'm sure they're in for January. Print them out, put them in a folder, bring them in the office. We're going to take all that data on all your different investments, and we're going to build for you your own personalized financial portal where you can get a bird's eye view of your entire financial life, and then we can start looking at all those critical components. We're going to look at everything from diversification. If the market goes down big tomorrow, are you protected? What hidden risks do you have in your portfolio? How do you protect yourself for retirement? We're going to show you exactly how to do that. We're going to look at income. You need to fill in that income gap in retirement. How are you going to draw from your portfolio in retirement? We're going to show you how to increase or optimize the income on your portfolio so you have a stream of income that you can't outlive. And we're going to look at fees and taxes. There's a lot of hidden costs in your investment portfolio. In those mutual fund, annuities, insurance products you don't know you're paying, we're going to show you where all the hidden costs are in your portfolio. We're going to show you how to reduce cost and optimize your portfolio for taxes so there's more money in your pocket. Then we're going to tie it all together into one total financial master plan, and we're going to determine the most critical question. Are you going to outlive your money? Or more importantly, is your money going to outlive you? Utilizing strategies now, our family has literally worked on for over 45 years to take your family from point A to point B with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success. Hey, all you have to do is text or call 844-752-6692, 844-752-6692, or simply call 844-PLAN-NYC. That's 844-P-L-A-N-N-Y-C. If you're one of our next seven callers, you've saved over 500000 for retirement. Brian and I will create for you your own total financial masterpiece. There's no obligation. There's no cost. There's no strings attached. But there's no plan unless you call or text right now, 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. Or simply call 844-PLAN-NYC. That's 844-P-L-A-N-N-Y-C. This is Bob, and I'm with my son, Rye, and we're the pains of No Pain, No Gain Financial Radio. It's Ryan Payne, Bob Payne, No Pain, No Gain Financial Radio, and of course, that's P. A Y N E. And Bob and I were simple men, as you know. So we like to keep it simple for you. And that's why we put together our latest guide. We give you five ways to save on taxes this year in 2020. And we give you the highlights of the new Secure Act. There's a lot of new tax benefits available to you. We break them down for you. You can download it for free. Simply text the word bullish to 555 888. That's the word bullish, spelled B U L L I S H, to 555 888. We give you five ways to save on taxes in 2020 and give you all the highlights from the new Secure Act. There's a lot of new tax benefits you want to know about. You can download it for free. Money saved in taxes is just as green as any money can make invest it at 555-888. You can text the word bullish to 555-888. And if you want to learn more about me and Bob, you can check us out on the World Wide Web. Go to bebullish.com. That's bebullish.com. You can subscribe to the show. You can get older episodes of the show, and you can learn more about our firm, Pain Capital Management. And yes, Bob's hair is real, but you want to check it out for yourself. Go to bebullish.com. You can check out that great head of hair. And you can catch some of our advisors like myself on most of the major networks every week from CNBC, Fox Business News, to Yahoo Finance, talking about our latest thoughts on the economy and the market. And if you ever have a question you want to ask myself or Bob, you can ask us questions directly. Simply email us questions at bbullish.com. That's questions at bbullish.com. Bob and I will answer all your questions directly. And if it's a really good question, we answer it right here on the show. And to help us with questions today, we have our man in the studio, Dan Irving. Dan, what's shaking today, brother? How you doing? Hello, Ryan and Bob. Doing well. Uh, usually this time of year, I would be missing uh, the lack of football in my life. But thankfully, the XFL is back. And oh. I am looking forward to the new season. Uh, Dan and 10 other people. Yeah. <laughs> I've been waiting for the XFL to start. It's like jazz. You can tell North Carolina's not winning, right? Yeah. <laughs> Panthers haven't been doing so well, so I need to find another team. Yeah. <laughs> well, we got some great questions in the mailbag today. Our first question comes to us from Rose in Brooklyn Heights. And Rose says, Bob, it seems like every time I need to make a financial decision, I just end up talking myself in circles. 
For example, I have some tech stocks that I think I should sell, but I'll have to pay taxes if I do. Or another example, the investments in my 401k are probably too risky for my age, but I don't want to miss out on a good market by being too conservative. How do I stop talking in a circle and never making a decision? Boy, oh boy, Ry Rose sounds like someone who should have listened to our show today because that's all we talked about was the emotions of decision making. And, you know, the one thing we didn't talk about, which is really her problem, is inertia, right? I mean, it's just, yes. it, it is emotional, but it leads to inertia. And, you know, what's the rate of return on inertia, Ry? <laughs> it's not very good because typically with inertia, you've probably been sitting in cash with way too much money earning nothing. And as the market goes higher, you're like, ah, oh, should have, would have, could have. It's a lousy place to be. And the return is lousy, Bob. Yeah. I think that's the beauty of having a strategy based on your goals. I mean, we call it A to B, you know, it really, you know, kind of it defaults to a, a, uh, an appropriate, you know, asset allocation in terms of how your investments are diversified. And the fact of the matter is when you look at the market, you look at a well-diversified balanced portfolio, you make money every day. And there's opportunities in the market every day. If you have a portfolio that everything's doing well and you're happy, you don't have a right portfolio, right? Yeah, and I think the other thing is it's not an all or none decision, right? It's not like I have to be all at risk in the markets or I need to have all my money conservative. It's really about having a balance so you get the best of all worlds. You know, I always look at it as, look, the market goes up, you will participate. But if the market goes down, you're not going to get hammered and ruin your retirement goals. And that's kind of the magic place to be. And for all of us, that magic place to be is different. And that's why you run a customized financial plan so you can find out what your specific balance has to be, not your neighbors or your brother-in-laws, you know? So true, Ry. I talked to one of my nearest and dearest and oldest client, Bernie, the other day. You know Bernie. Oh, yeah. And he says, you know, Bob, you, Bob, I got... <laughs> you love Bernie. Yeah, and, and, you know, he has to be invested because he needs income to, to meet his goals and his dreams and his needs. And, and they keep going up every month. He says, it's amazing, the rate of inflation on senior citizens. But he talks about a buddy of his he has lunch with who's been 100% in cash now for 10 years uh, because yeah. he's afraid to make a decision. Uh, he's afraid that, you know, as soon as he makes that investment, the market's going to drop. But the fact of the matter is for him, he's getting enough income even at a negative return to supplement his lifestyle. So it's not always, you know, making money is the right decisions. Making the right decisions for you is really what's critical. Thank you, Rose, for writing in. Our next question comes to us from Ron in Monmouth County, New Jersey. And Ron says, Ryan, I think it is unlikely, but if Trump is removed from office, I told my advisor to sell all of our stocks in all of our accounts <laughs> immediately. He does not agree with our decision, but I need to protect my family. What are your thoughts? Wow. Well, this obviously happened before the impeachment, but we talked about this earlier on the show, and I can't stress this enough. And I know, depending on what party you support, you can't let that get in the way of your investment decisions. There's never a good time to sell your portfolio based on an event. It's just it's ludicrous. Um, and I know it's on everyone's mind that right now, Bob, but you know, you, you really have to take your emotion and political feelings out of the equation. It just doesn't correlate to your goals and the way in being invested at all. It really doesn't. Well, that's one of my number one rules, right? You don't let your political thinking impact your investment decision making. Because if you look at it over history, as I mentioned more than once today, we've been in a big booming bull market since the day we were born. And over that time, we've had each party in power. So it doesn't matter who's in Washington. As a matter of fact, my favorite investor, the smartest investor in the world, Warren Buffett says, I never make an investment decision based on who's sitting in the White House. And I think you have to think about this way. You're buying companies that you believe in over time. And I'm being willing to bet that Jeff Bezos doesn't care who's on Capitol Hill when he's making a decision to grow Amazon, and he did in the last 10 years. And that's what you have to think about. You're owning great companies that are paying income, and it's not about what price they're going to be at tomorrow. Like, good example would be real estate. If you had a great piece of real estate, you knew it was going to be worth a lot more in the future would you sell it the day after an election because you didn't like who was in office? No way. You wouldn't do it. Well, you're not going to stop using your cell phone. You're not going to stop driving your car. Uh, you're not going to stop going on a vacation. So all those companies are going to continue to make money in spite of the fact that who you'd like didn't get into the White House. So it really doesn't matter. Matter of fact, the one thing that Wall Street loves when it comes to politics, right, absolutely loves is gridlock. When there's yes. equal amounts of power in D.C. and nobody can get anything done. That's what they like. <laughs> and 
And there's a lot of that. So be thankful for the gridlock because it's actually very good for your portfolio. <laughs> so, Ryan, I got a question for you. On a scale of one to 10, how financially organized does Rose and Ron sound to you? We've got two hard cases here, Bob. I mean, Rose clearly needs to get a plan in place so she can make a decision on her investments. Ron needs to start thinking about his goals, not his political affiliations, to get serious about his retirement. I'm going to go two across the board. I am not benevolent today. Well, you're not. That's, uh, that's pretty low. So let me ask all of you a question. On a scale of one to 10, how financially organized are you right now? What would you give yourself as a score? More importantly, what would your spouse give you? And what would Ryan give you? Would it be a two or would it be a 10? And why wouldn't you want to be a 10? And if you do, so here's your opportunity. If you're one of our next four callers, because you only have four spots left and you saved over 500000 for retirement, Ryan and I will create for you your own. 360 financial portal, which will enable you to become financially organized because it's a financial GPS, no different than the GPS in your car or your van. It'll tell you where you are financially. And more importantly, it'll tell you exactly where you're going and report to you on your progress of your journey to your financial independence. It will define your financial timeline and the best, most efficient route to achieve your goals. It will put your financial life on autopilot and help you to avoid those financial potholes that Ryan tells you about on a weekly basis. It will track and monitor and update your net worth in real time so you'll always know where you are and most importantly, when you're gonna get there and how successful you're gonna be as an investor. In addition, Ryan and I will take all those statements that you just got in the mail and we'll break it down into a simple, easy to read portfolio analysis, which will tell you, are you diversified? Do you have hidden costs or fees in your portfolio? Are you achieving the income that's attainable from the portfolio that you have today? You know, once you're in retirement, we all need that income gap to be filled. You know, that paycheck doesn't come in anymore. We need income to hit that checking account. And that means you have to have a dependable, repeatable income stream. And if you're retired right now, your number one goal is to keep it that way. And the only way to do that is to have that income hitting your account on a monthly basis. In addition, we're going to tie it all together into one customized total financial master plan. Well, we'll answer that age old question. Are you and your family going to outlive your money or is your money going to outlive you? Utilizing strategies that my family's been perfecting now for over 40 years. That's right. For four decades, we've been helping families like yours get from your financial point A to your goals, to your dreams, to your point B with the least amount of risk and only the certainty that a fiduciary like pain capital management can provide. So don't waste time. We have four slots left. You can call or text at 844-752-6692 if you have over $500,000 saved for retirement at 844-752-6692. This is your shot to get a second opinion. Make sure you're on track for retirement at 844-752-6692. That's 844 plan NYC, that's 844-P-L-A-N-N-Y-C. This is no pain, no gain, financial radio. It's Ryan Payne, Bob Payne, no pain, no gain, financial radio. And Bob and I want to make sure you have the most common sense, practical advice for your investing, financial planning. That's why we put together our latest guide. We give you five ways to save on taxes this year, 2020. And we give you the new highlights from the new SECURE Act, there's a lot of new tax advantages you have, you want to know about. You can download it for free. Simply text the word bullish, that's B U L L I S H, to 555 888. That's the word bullish to 555 888. We give you five ways to maximize your retirement accounts in 2020, and we give you all the new highlights of the tax advantages you can take advantage of with the new Secure Act. Money saved in taxes, just as green as any money you can make invested. You can download it for free. Simply text the word bullish to 555-888. That's the word bullish to 555-888. And now we have a very, very special guest on the show, Bob Sun, my brother, financial advisor at Payne Capital Management, Chris Payne. Chris, man, as always, it's good to have you on the show, man. It's good to have Dad's second favorite son uh, on the show this week. <laughs> You know, right? It's, it's always know. good to be here, and uh, you know, I just, I just can't uh, get over how, how, how handsome we all look. You know, we must take after mom. <laughs> yeah. Wow! Yeah, this, the this segment called "All Pain, Lots of Gain." So, uh, you know, let's let's keep it let's keep it honest here. 
<laughs> All right. Well, this is our spotlight segment. Every week we take a real case and we break down how we helped a certain person or couple get on their path to financial freedom. Chris, you worked on a case recently. Why don't you break it down for Bob and I and tell us how you helped this couple get on their path to financial freedom? Yeah, sure. So I did work on a really interesting case. And uh, I'd like to start off by asking a question. Dad, have you ever gone to the doctor and without even looking at you, the doctor gave you a medication? Never. You know, it's uh, would totally be medical malpractice, Chris, to prescribe something without knowing my symptoms or what my problems were. Well, that's a great word that used uh, malpractice. And I would say that's probably the case with this particular case that we're talking about today. So I sat down with this couple, a nice couple from New Jersey, and they handed me a portfolio and I couldn't make heads or tails of the portfolio. I didn't understand why they were invested, what they're invested in. And then they handed me a, a projection of that the, that the advisor had given them you know, based on their, their goals. Right. And on the projection, it showed a 9.93% rate of return at a 2% rate of inflation over time. So I guess my question would be, does that sound like a reasonable, achievable, conservative rate of return for a couple going into retirement and living off this portfolio for the rest of their lives? What do you think? So Chris, if that's an actual audited number, um, that means that this advisor is outperforming the greatest investors of all time so sign me up if that's the case. If that's an audited number, I'm, I'm in. Yeah, I think, I think we could all agree that's a pretty phenomenal return. Uh, the only problem is, is that in 2019, not only was this portfolio did not outperform its, its underlying indexes, but it actually was in the negative for the year of 2019. <laughs> so, uh, I think so we can all job. agree that's pretty astounding considering the phenomenal year that we had last year. Yeah, it's absolutely incredible um, that they could even put numbers like this down. That's why it's important, too. If you're going to get a financial projection, find out what the numbers they are using are. I mean, I know when we run projections, it could be as low as 4 or 5% returns, but 9% returns, is that really realistic? I mean, obviously, it's probably not with a lot of risk. And I'm assuming since they're getting close to retirement, this couple wanted to reduce risk, not add more risk to their portfolio. Yeah, you're absolutely right, Ry. And you know what? We went through a, a very comprehensive financial plan with them. And I had asked, I said, you know, how did the advisor derive the expenses that you're using on the plan that they put together for you? And their response was, well, he just took an average number of what people that would take Social Security at our age uh, would pull out of the portfolio. And, you know, what we actually found out is that the number that they're actually spending was more than double than what the advisor had put on their, their long-term conservative projection. And... Uh, I, I don't know about you guys, but I think that that's pretty astounding to think that, you know, not only uh, did the advisor promise a rate of return, which is completely unachievable, but but also had put a number down of what they were spending that was completely inaccurate. No, you know, Chris, suspect. I see uh, all the time people come in with cookie cutter portfolios. This is the first time I saw a cookie cutter financial plan that was just, uh, you know, plug in the person's name. Same plan applies to everybody that comes through the door. Exactly. And, you know, the other thing that, that kind of blew me away, you just kind of sit there and think about it. This is a portfolio they're going to live on for the rest of their lives to find out at some point without having a second opinion, which they were smart to do to come to us, to find out that at some point they were going to run out of money. That would have come to a shock when it was way too late. So really, it's a, it's a great thing that they actually came in and said, you know what, I'm concerned about this. Can you take a look? Are we actually in good shape? And is this a reasonable portfolio for someone our age and our, our goals and our lifestyle? Chris, do they suspect that the numbers weren't correct? Because, I mean, how do you know? You're going to a financial professional, quote unquote. You just assume that the numbers that they're running are, are correct. What were the red flags to say, hey, we need a second opinion here? I'm not. These numbers seem a little bit out of whack with what's probably realistic. Well, fortunately, uh, the, uh, one, of the, uh, one of the members of the couple that uh, had worked in the financial services industry, she actually had worked for, uh, for Prudential. And when she took a look at it, she thought, you know, she had a red flag, something, something in her heart said, you know what, this, is, this isn't right. This doesn't feel right. Nothing about this seems to make sense to me. And she was absolutely spot on. You know, Chris, you talked to me about that at the beginning that, you know, a doctor ever prescribed something without doing an examination. You know, I guess my question is, did, did anybody do a stress test on this portfolio before you? You know, if I were a betting man, I'd say absolutely not. Well, they have because 70% of it, the market's at risk. So when you did the stress test on this portfolio, how would it have fared back in 2009, Chris, with a 50% decline in the stock market? Uh, th this portfolio would have declined 50% plus. 
Ouch. So not only was it not conservative, it's actually very aggressive. And, and, and these people are not in a position to not only achieve their goals, but they actually could be out of money, uh, as you said, you know, early in their retirement years. Yeah, that's absolutely right, Dad. And you know what? The other thing that I noticed about this portfolio is that they own a lot of illiquid investments, a lot of uh, illiquid oh, real estate yeah. investment trust. So that's a big one, red flag for me. That was a huge red flag. And I, when I explained this to them, that they own portfolios that, that you know, they're there's, there's very little certainty or there, there may not be a possibility that they get their, their money out anytime soon. They were they were extremely shocked. They had no idea. And fair, fair thing to say, they were very angry, too. Yeah. Mm. Well, I think that's the other thing, as we talked about this on the show earlier today. You want to know what you own because a lot of these things that sound great, like those real estate investment trusts, they're sold a lot on Long Island. There's a firm that sells them. We won't mention names is a lot of times you don't even realize that it's hard to sell these things. And no one tells you that because it gets priced the same way on your statement every month. You wouldn't even know that if you tried to sell out of it, you'd sell out a loss. So it's so critical to really understand everything you own in your portfolio. And that's why, like in this case, having a second opinion can be so helpful just to make sure, hey, I'm doing everything right. Or, whoa, there's a lot of risk here I didn't know about. Well, I think it's a good point to make, uh, Ryan, Chris, is that there is there is no investment that's illiquid that can't be made with a liquid investment. It's something that, you know, where you can always sell, it can always get out of. And most in most cases, not 100 percent of the time, but I'd say 99.999 percent of the time, you'll have a better return with lower cost. Yeah, 100 percent, Dad. You know, I like to say if it's illiquid, it's inappropriate. Oh, I like that, Chris. <laughs> Another zinger today, Chris. Uh, You're going to have to start a new book, uh, the book of Chris-isms. <laughs> I couldn't well, Chris, agree more. <laughs> great job on this, as Bob would like to say. Another financial masterpiece. Just great job pointing out a lot of the things that this couple didn't know that was going completely wrong. And if you're thinking to yourself right now, like I'd like a second opinion like this. I just want to make sure what I'm doing is correct and that everything I own is in line with what my goals are. Here's your shot to do it. We literally have two slots left. If you have over $500,000 safe for retirement, call or text us right now. Myself, Bob, Chris Payne will run for you our total financial master plan. We'll do that with no obligation or cost. It's a full holistic review just like this. If you bring in your statements from last month, from January, we'll take all that data. We're going to build for you your own personalized financial portal where we're going to look at all your investments, your entire net worth at a bird's eye view, and we're going to start to look at all the hidden risks in your portfolio. What is your real diversification? If the market goes down tomorrow, are you protected? What hidden risks do you have in your portfolio you don't know about? We're going to show you where all those weaknesses are in your portfolio and how to correct them. We're going to look at income. There's a better outcome with income is what my brother likes to say. What's your income plan for retirement? We're going to show you how to optimize or increase the income on your portfolio, create an income stream in retirement that you don't outlive, and we're going to look at fees and taxes. There's a lot of hidden costs in these investment portfolios you don't know you're paying. Those mutual funds, annuities, insurance products, we're going to show you where all the hidden costs are, show you how to reduce costs and optimize your portfolio for taxes so there's more money in your pocket. Then we're going to tie it all together into one total financial master plan, and we're going to determine the most critical question. Are you going to outlive your money? Or more importantly, is your money going to outlive you? Utilizing strategies now our family has literally worked on for over 45 years to take your family from point A to point B with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success. Hey, don't miss out. Be one of our next two callers and have at least 500000 for retirement. Rye, Chris, and I, all pain, lots of gain, will create for you your own total financial master plan. Now, there's no obligation and there's no cost, but there's no plan unless you text or call 844-752-6692. That's 844-752. 752-6692, or you just simply call 844-PLAN-NYC, 844-PLAN-NYC. Well, another great show. Chris, always great to have the uh, the pain trio on. I know listeners wait months and months for you to come on the show. You know, that the fan base is wide from what I hear. You know, right? I, I know that I'm getting famous, especially when you start to steal my line. So, you know, that's the <laughs> highest form of flattery. <laughs> Big Bob. <laughs> hey, you know, there's nothing are... like hanging out with your two sons. And I'm just wondering, you know, I'm, I'm 66 years old. I've never been able to grow a beard. And both of you have a beard. How's that work? You know, I must take you after your mother. <laughs> We're better better uh, genetically built. So it's just, the, it's just nature. <laughs> We're another great show. And as always, 
Be bullish. 